Good morning, Deep East Psych. It is Friday, finally. The weeks, although every day blends together, they seem long at times. Um, thought I'd throw a little bit of, of, of Monsters and Men for you guys. Um, so that'll uh, hopefully get you awake and going for today. Or maybe it's midnight and you are awake and going. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Today is short. I thought I'd have a, a little short lesson for Friday. Um, we're going to talk about um, something known as Bloom's Taxonomy today. Um, this is actually our last of our thinking lessons. We're going to be moving on to language next week. Um, so you need to take notes on this short abbreviated lecture. And then we have a second dice assignment that will be due on um, Sunday at 1159 because we'll roll the dice on Monday and I'll determine which one I'm grading. So we'll do that together on Monday on Monday's lecture. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is Bloom's taxonomy. And of course, you know, feel free to pause me and take notes because the taxonomy has quite a bit of words on it. But like I said, we only, it's a short lecture, so we only have three slides to get through. So Bloom's taxonomy, um, this is a theory of how we basically learn and think. So one of the this is one of the main theories that kind of um, rules education, rules instruction, or is what we would call a pedagog pedagogical theory of education. So what happens is we build upon this triangle. And so learning as children, we first begin to learn information by, and I'm going to move myself here, by can you recall or can you remember information? That's the most basic level of thinking that we do as humans, according to Bloom's taxonomy. Can you remember information? Then once we know how to remember information, like this means one, this means two, or the symbol that is the letter A, can sound like A or A, ah, okay? So that's remembering information. Once we remember information, we can build on that and we can start to look for intellectual understanding of information. Can a student explain ideas or concepts? Um, that's the next level. So it kind of shows you how we come to become critical thinkers. These first basic layers not critical thinking. We're just learning information and showing what we understand about information. It's why in elementary school, we don't have you do a lot of evaluating yet. You're not there. You can see evaluation is pretty high up on the pyramid of thinking, of learning. So we have to first learn how to remember and understand. Then we have to learn how to apply. Can the student use the information in a new way? So let me talk about a common thing that you probably experienced as maybe second, third grade. Teacher would give you a vocabulary set of words. You have to remember what those words mean. Then maybe the teacher gave you some sentences and they left out a word, usually the vocabulary word, and maybe you had a... Um, Maybe you had a word bank that you could use in order to apply that sentence. So remembering the words, understanding what they mean, and then applying them by using maybe fill in the blank sentences. Now, those are very basic. That's elementary skills. But really what Bloom's Taxonomy says is that's about a second to third grade skills. Most of our first graders, kindergarten teachers, they're learning how to do these first two. Then we move up to application. Then after that, we move up to analyzing. Can the student, student distinguish between the different parts? Okay, so now 
maybe in about fourth grade, fifth grade, instead of just doing the sentence, fill in the blank with the vocabulary, we start learning, is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it an adjective? It is an adverb. We start analyzing those different parts. Then we may start to have to evaluate them. Okay, uh, can the student justify a stand or a decision? Maybe starting to look at compare and contrast. Um, if we're looking at two similar words, two synonyms, you know, what's the difference? What makes them slightly different from each other? Why would we use the word construct versus to build? So we start evaluating. And then lastly, at the highest level of thinking is creation. Can the student create a new product or point of view? Okay, so when you see how teachers teach, oftentimes, like I know your English teachers do this, you they are building from the bottom up. Whoops, let's go back here. Um, they're building from that bottom up into your ability to learn new information and critically think about it and create. It's why many teachers are very project-based learning oriented because creating is at that upper level of thinking. You have to demonstrate all of these other things in order to create, okay? So that's a very basic theory of pedagogical practices for teachers, all right? Um, it's what runs pretty much education. Now here at Eagle Valley High School, we don't use Bloom's taxonomy in verbiage. We use what we call Costa's levels of questioning. OK, this is a very avid thing. And since we're an avid school, all of our teachers tend to use Costas, which is based on Bloom's taxonomy. And again, it's very simple. It goes back to the same idea of the pyramid, knowledge to comprehension, to application, to analysis, to synthesis, to evaluation. OK, and that creation level right here, that creating the evaluating is right at that upper level, level three, the penthouse is what they call it. You can see there down here, there are these verbs that maybe a teacher relies on, such as if Mr. Gleiss was telling you for government, I need you to um, maybe hypothesize or gener generate um, a scenario that would fit the Fifth Amendment. You are now creating, okay? Or let's say that Miss Nelson is having you um, debate, decide, okay? Critique. You're in those upper levels of evaluating. So most of your DE AP classes, you're doing these types of things. But likely what the teacher is doing to get you to that is building on these types of things, okay? So that is based on this theory of Bloom's taxonomy of how we think and how we process and get to those upper levels of thinking. Um, I have one more example here, very basic. So the first level of Bloom's taxonomy here, which is knowledge, okay? What is this? It's a circle. I'm identifying really easy. This is why we love multiple choice questions typically that teachers put together because those multiple choice questions are usually right about in these levels, okay? We oftentimes don't love those project-based learning types of projects because they're in the upper levels. It makes you have to do a lot more. Comprehension, which shape is a circle? Picking which one. Um, application, draw a circle under a triangle, having to know those concepts in order to do that. Uh, analysis, which shapes did I use to draw this figure? Synthesis, create a new figure from these shapes. And lastly, evaluation, which figure is better and why? Okay, and we can see there is difference between Costas and Bloom's. Costas has evaluating as the top priority or the top level of thinking, whereas Bloom's has creating as the top. Um, but what you can see from Costa's is they're both in that same section of upper levels of thinking. Okay, so that's all in terms of our lecture.
your dice assignment has to do with the slides that I accidentally hit, um, the deductive and inductive reasoning that we learned from our last lecture. So if you need to go back and see that lecture, then please do. Um, what you're going to be doing with that inductive and deductive reasoning lecture is you are going to um, be looking at a worksheet. I will admit that this worksheet is not an easy worksheet, okay? If you come in here, my lecture will be in here, and then here's the inductive deductive reasoning worksheet. I'll go ahead and show you that worksheet. And of course, Schoology isn't working. So let's do it this way. We'll go in the roundabout way of doing it. And so if you look at this worksheet, I would definitely read the directions on the top. I even kind of do some notes for you there of what is deductive reasoning. If you can't remember from your notes, what is inductive reasoning? I do some examples here. OK, um, and kind of have you guys looking at the examples. All right. And then I have you guys deciding for yourself, is it deductive or is it inductive? I do not mind for you at all to work with a partner on this, but you both are filling out your own worksheet since it is a dice assignment. Um, once again, this would be something that I would have you do in class um, in order to um, get this done correctly. Um, what I will do with these examples is I will post the answers for these examples in Schoology. So that way you can kind of test yourself a little bit beforehand. Normally we would do them together and I would ask you, what is the answer here? But what I'll do instead is within Schoology is I will place the answers Let's see if I can get Schoology to work. I know that you guys have been struggling. I apologize with, for that. Um, I'll put the answers right down in here and just put a real quick sheet of here's what your answers are. That way you can kind of see, am I on the right track? Okay. So with that said, guys, um, hope you have a happy Friday. Um, and um, we will be talking to you again. School will be starting. School. We'll be talking to you again soon. We'll be starting our new unit next week. I will have a test date for you probably by the middle of the week because we have language left and intelligence left. So we still have a bit to go in this lecture, but we are moving on to the second sub topic. All right, guys, hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to move me so I can stop the video and we'll talk to you later.